yesterday's class, we had covered um, the basics of arithmetics, sets, sign numbers, and we're starting off with integers today. I explained the concept of number line in class yesterday. Um, and that number line basically had all the numbers, negatives, positives, and the zero, like this. There's a zero in between, and all the numbers towards the right-hand side are positive numbers. The numbers towards the left-hand side are negative numbers. So all these negative numbers are known as negative integers. And positive numbers are known as positive integers. And the zero is a non-positive, non-negative. Because zero is a neutral number, so it's neither positive, neither negative. Acha. So what if I write down a series of integers, for example, zero, minus one, minus two, minus three. Now, this series has a zero and it has three negative integers. So what would you call this entire series, entire set altogether? We'll call this a set of non-positive integers. So non-positive integers will have all the negative integers as well as a zero. Because it has a zero, you cannot call it negative integers. So this is why we'll call it non-positive integers because non-positive integers will leave behind for us the negatives and the zero. Similarly, if I write down a series having zero, one, two, three. Now you see this series has zero plus three positive integers. So this set would be called a non-negative integers set. Why? Because it has the positives and the zero. There's no negative integer in this set. This is why it's known as non-negative integers. Okay, there's another important concept, consecutive integers. What do we understand by consecutive integers? Consecutive integers are two or more integers written in sequence. Consecutive means in a sequence, back to back, one after the other. For example, one, two, three, four, five. So these are five integers in a sequence. Similarly, two, three, four, five, six, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So all of these are consecutive integers where one, you see, each of which is one more than the preceding integer. All right. For example, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. What if we represent these consecutive integers in form of expressions? For example, A. So the integer after A must be one greater than A. So we'll write it as A plus one. The integer after A plus one will be uh, one greater than a plus one, so any a plus two, a plus three. So if let's say you're not given with a specific integer and you are simply asked to write consecutive integers in form of expressions, you're going to add one in every preceding integer to get the new one. For example, n is the first integer. So the second one will be n plus one. The third one will be n plus two. The, third, the fourth one will be n plus three, n plus four, and so on. What if I tell you n is n is five? So your first integer here, it will be five. Second one would be five plus one. The third one would be five plus two. The fourth one would be five plus three. And the fifth one would be five plus four. If you solve it all, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Consecutive integers? Yes. All right. So you can represent consecutive integers as these expressions where one is added to the preceding integer. All clear? So let me move on. Now 
Now we're moving on to an example question. The question says, uh, you're given with three consecutive integers. The question says you have three consecutive integers. Some of these three integers is 75. Is less than 75. The sum here, when if you add these three integers, it will be less than 75. What is the greatest possible value of the smallest of the three integers? Greatest possible value of the smallest of the three integers. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this? We already know that if you're given, if you're not given with any specific integer, you can express them as an expression. For example, so the first one would be n, the second integer could be n plus one, and the third one could be n plus two. So let's just write these, n, n plus one, n plus two. And they've said, if you add these three integers, the sum, the answer would be less than 75. So let's add this, n plus, n plus one plus n plus two. So we've added the three integers. The answer will be less than 75. We can simplify it further. n plus n plus one plus n plus two, less than 75. n plus n plus n is three n plus three, two plus one is less than 75. So if we solve it for n, yeah? 3n is less than 75 minus 3. 3n is less than 72. Divide it on both sides. n is less than 24. This is the answer. That 24 is the greatest value of the smallest integer. Less than 24 ka matlab ye hai ke ab jo bhi n ki value hogi, it will be less than 24. 24 is the highest value that you have. Right? So we just wrote an expression, we solved it for the unknown number and we got the answer. So n can be 23. So 23 can be the answer. So the number has to be less than 24. All right. So we're going to simply pick up what? 23, a number lesser than 24. Okay. Now. Let's look at another example. If you're given with, for example, these expressions here, for example, two is less than X and X is less than four. Similarly, three is less than Y and Y is less than seven. What is the largest integer value of X plus Y? X plus Y, question mark, largest value, largest integer value. So how are we gonna solve this? If X and Y are integers, the largest value uh, must be, they go up and meter set there. X is in bit, X is greater than two and less than four. So this means that x would be 3, right? Because it's greater than 2 and less than 4. And similarly, y. y could be 4, 5, or 6. There are three possible values for y. So we x got value to mil gai? 3 plus. There has to be a value for y. The answer should be the greatest. So obviously, aap, you're going to pick up the greatest value. 3 plus 6. Nine. So, यहाँ से हमने highest value को देखी. All right. I hope everything's clear up to now.
तो whenever you add integers, guys remember integers can never be in decimals and fractions because integers are whole numbers. So whenever you add integers, or if you get the difference, the answer will always be an integer. Two plus five, seven integer. Seven minus five, two integer. Okay. But the product, uh, and and also the product will, will, will always be the integer. So sum. Difference and product of integers will always be an integer. The quotient of two integers can be an integer, and it might not be an integer. For example. क्वेश्चन मतलब अगर आप डिवाइड कर रहे हैं दो इंटीजर्स को क्वेश्चन ऑफ इंटीजर्स मे और मे नॉट बी एन इंटीजर फॉर एग्जांपल लेट्स से 23 डिवाइडेड बाय 10 द आंसर इज 2.3 दिस इज नॉट एन इंटीजर um for example 10 by 5 it's 2 the answer is an integer so in case of division you might or might not get an integer okay all right Hmm, no. Let's look at an example question. लेकिन इस एग्जाम्पल को करने से पहले यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इट एप हाउ टू सॉल्व डिविजन प्रॉब्लम On the exam, using a calculator maybe. Remainders, if you find them, then you have to use a calculator to find the direct remainders. So you have to follow this step. For example, it said that hundred is divided by seven, and if you write this value in your calculator, the answer would be fourteen point two eight five seven one four. Now this tells you that the quotient is fourteen, but you cannot know what the remainder is. So ignore everything that's on the right side of the decimal place. Just know that this is the quotient. You you start to multiply the quotient with the divisor. Fourteen into seven, can think it. Answer will be ninety-eight. You subtract the answer from hundred. Jo aapko is answer aega. This is the remainder. So this small calculation will help you to find remainders using calculators. Again. If we given with a value, this is the number that's divided by seven. The answer is fourteen point two eight three seven one four. Now fourteen is the quotient. ये तो आपको पता लग गया, ये तो quotient आ गया. But what's the remainder? वो हमें नहीं पता. So you multiply the divisor and the quotient, you get the answer. Subtract that answer from hundred. जो answer आएगा, that will be the remainder. Let's look at an example question to understand it in a better way. Question says, if you divide Nine 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 by seven. जो आपका remainder आएगा, remainder would be a. If you divide seven 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 by nine, your remainder would be b. What is the remainder when a is divided by b? अब आपने a को b से divide कर दिया. They're asking what will be your remainder. Okay, so now let's solve it. Nine 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 by seven, guys. If you plug this value on your calculators, the nine 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 by seven would give you one forty two point seven one four. अब हमने क्या करना था? इन दोनों को मिलवाई करना था. तो one forty two point seven one four नहीं सिर्फ portion sorry one forty two 
multiply by 7, the answer would be 994. For the remainder, 999 minus 994, the answer is 5. So, A key value kya gai? 5. We just followed this step, which I have explained carefully. Now, same goes for the se second one 777 by 9. If you write down this on your calculator, the answer would be 86.333. Now, let's pick up the quotient 86 multiply by divisor that is 9. The answer would be 774. Now, the number is original. It says 774 minus 777 minus 774. The answer would be 3. So, value of B, we have to the remainder is B. So, B is 3. Now they're saying use A by B. So A was 5. B was um, 3. 5 divided by 3 gives you um, 1 point something. So we're going to pick up 1. And we'll multiply it with 3. It'll give you 3. So 5 minus 3 is 2. The remainder is 2. So the answer, this is the final answer. Remainder of 5 by 3 or remainder of A by B is 2. Please tell me if this is clear to you guys. So we can move forward. All clear? Okay. Now, another example. How many positive integers? The question says, how many positive integers less than 100 have a remainder of 3 when divided by 7? So you're supposed to divide positive integers less than 100 yani jo 100 se kam positive integers hai, if you divide those integers by 7 how many of those will give you a remainder of 3 this is what the question is asking so what we need to do here is to have a remainder of 3 when divide by 7 an integer must be 3 more than a multiple of 7. Do you get it? If I give this example, do, ke, For example, if you're 73 in pick up, 73 divided by 7. Let's use a calculator. So 73 by 7 is 10.428. 10 is the quotient. So 10 times 7 is 70. Yeah. 73 minus 70 is 3. Remainder again are 3 minus. You see the answer. 73 is one of the numbers. You need to choose. You need to tell how many positive integers less than 100. If you divide them by 7, will give you a remainder of 3. Okay. So what you need to do here is you need to take multiples of 7 and you need to add 3. You see how much is it? Because multiples of 7 will 70 to 70. I mean, 7 to 70. 10 tuck, and then you'll have three left. So let's pick up multiples of seven and simply add three to those. 
सो सेवन अब इसमें इस तरह से हो सकता है कि सेवन वन जर सेवन सेवन टेन टेन तो इजीली आ जाएंगे सेवेंटी तक फिर उसके बाद सेवन टाइम्स इलेवन वुड बी सेवेंटी सेवन सेवन टाइम्स ट्वेल्व वुड बी एटी फोर सेवन टाइम्स थर्टीन वुड बी नाइन्टी वन सेवन टाइम्स फोर्टीन वुड बी नाइन्टी एट दैट्स इट इसके बाद हंड्रेड सुपर चल जाएगा All right. So we're taking multiples of seven. I said we don't even pick this one because if we add three, add करते हैं तो ये one one बन जाएगा. So add three to this. Add three to all of these. Seventy seven, eighty one, eighty um, seven, ninety four. So seventy से नीचे वही sixty three because we're following the table of seven. All right. Seven के all the multiples till seventy. And then up till hundred, zero be side me a jayega, including zero. So that would make fourteen positive integers. Less than hundred, we'll have a remainder of three one divided by seven. Guys, any questions? You didn't get it, okay? Uh, so what I was saying here was that, look, we need positive integers. We need positive integers that are less than hundred. And if you divide those integers by seven, you, the the remainder should be three. So we need one thing. Now we have studied the example of seventy-three. From this, we have got to understand that if we divide seventy-three by seven, then your answer is one second. वो आपका आंसर इस तरह का आ रहा है कि यहाँ पे टेन पॉइंट समथिंग है तो दिस पॉइंट समथिंग यू टेक पिक पिक अप दिस क्वेश्चन जहां पे टेन आ जाए देखो हमें क्या करना है क्योंकि हर सूरत में जो हमारा क्वेश्चन है दैट नीड्स टू बी टेन टू मल्टीप्लाई विथ सेवन या उससे थोड़ा सा बड़ा नंबर ताकि आंसर हमारे पास थ्री आ जाए देखो तो हमने यहाँ पे सेवेंटी में थ्री एड किया था सेवेंटी वॉज अ मल्टीपल ऑफ सेवन और So we added three to it. It became seventy-three divided by seven. You got ten point four. You picked up the quotient, multiplied with with seven. Seventy seventy minus seventy is thirty-three. Remainder. Now, from here, what we extracted was that what if we pick all the multiples of seven and we start adding three? For example, seven times two is fourteen. All right. So, this means that if we add fourteen to three, then 14 plus 3 is 17. और अगर हम 17 को 7 से डिवाइड करें, use a calculator, तो जो आंसर आएगा हमारे पास, it will be, hold on for a second, 2.428. 2 is the quotient. 2 times 7 is 14. 17 minus 14 is again 3. The remainder three are there. So this trick actually works. If you pick up all the multiples, चलो. Let's pick up seven three. Twenty one को pick कर देते हैं. Seven times three multiple twenty one आ गया. इसमें three add करना है. Twenty four answer. Twenty four को seven से divide करना है. Answer क्या आएगा? Twenty four divided by seven would give you three point four two eight. Three is the quotient. Multiplied with seven. Seven times three is again twenty one. So twenty four minus twenty one is three. Answer is again three. So this way, if you pick up any multiple of seven, and you add three to it, and then you divide it by seven, the remainder will always be three. So now we have said this because you have a limit that everything should be less than hundred. So less than hundred means seven. So ten multiples are easily coming. Any seven means seven. Seven means fourteen, twenty one, twenty four, and so on till seventy. तो ये तो टेन हो गए ऑलरेडी इसमें जीरो भी होगा जीरो तो शुरू करेंगे हम लोग अच्छा अब इसके अलावा हमने बाकी क्या पढ़े थे कि सेवन इलेवन जर सेवेंटी सेवन एक और आ गया सेवन ट्वेल्व जर एटी फोर सेवन थर्टीन जर नाइनटी वन इन तीनों में आप थ्री थ्री एड करते जाओ 
तो आंसर आपको मिल जाएगा तो यानी टेन जीरो एक और हो गया थ्री ये वाले हो गए ऑल टूगेदर देर आर फोर्टीन इंटीजर्स लेस देन हंड्रेड इफ यू डिवाइड दो इंटीजर्स बाय सेवन रिमाइंडर विल ऑलवेज बी थ्री रिमेम्बर इनको आपने इनमें थ्री एड करना है इन सबको रॉ फॉर्म में नहीं छोड़ना हर मल्टीपल में यूल एड थ्री कीपिंग इन माइंड आंसर हैज टू बी लेस देन हंड्रेड उरूज आई यू नाउ क्लियर All right. Hmm. Now, let's move on to the concept of factors and multiples. Also, Adin, are you also getting it? Because I, I didn't uh, get your feedback. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's try to understand the concept of factors, multiples. Uh, a factor. is a number that that divides a particular number and multiples are all those numbers that are the results of products okay so for example if i write down the factors of 12 the factors of 12 kya honge sabse pehle to negative se shuru karte hain kya chale positive se kar lete hain 12 by 1 theek hai 1 is a factor 12 once aayega 12 by 2 6 aa jayega 12 by 3 4 aa jayega theek hai then 4 then 6 and 12 so these are the factors of 12 negatives mein chale jaye to minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 6 minus 12 ye wo numbers hain jo ke 12 ko completely divide kar rahe hain so any number other than these displayed on your screens cannot be a factor of 12 because it cannot divide 12 completely All right. Now let's write down the multiples of twelve. Multiples of twelve are all the numbers that are the results, are the products of any number multiplied by twelve. For instance, twelve zeros are zero, so zero is a multiple. Twelve ones are twelve. The answer is twelve twos are twenty-four. Twelve threes are thirty-six. Twelve fours are forty-eight. So on. 12 times negative 1 is negative 12 12 times negative 2 is negative 24 negative 3 is negative 36 negative 48 and so on so these are the multiples remember so this tells us the multiples continue but 12 times 100 would be 1200 to wo to kabhi never ending cycle like however the factors are always limited because not every number will completely divide a particular number so an integer has a definite number of factors but an infinite set of multiples multiples can be unlimited but factors will always be limited so this information tells us that an integer always has definite number of factors but unlimited integers Sorry, unlimited multiples. This is key information. Okay. I hope um, you guys also are familiar with factor trees. because you should be able to make factor trees to understand the concept of factors so let's make some factor trees here for example you have one weight now in order to write down its factors remember one weight ko aap two se divide kar denge yahan pe to answer aapke paas aa jayega 54 then 54 can be further Divided by six and nine, so six nine. Six ko divide further. We can do two or three me to get six. Two by six by two is three, and six by three is two. Then nine could be divided by three and another three. So how many factors? Two, two, three, three, three. So you can write down all the factors of one weight. Two, two, three, 
2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Ye wale, ye sare factors. Similarly, for example, if we had 240 here, so in case of 240, the first number 2 and 10 then divide kar, 24 and 10 completely divide kar diya. 24 can be divided by 6 and 4. 4 and 6. 4 can be divided by 2 and 2. 6 by 2 and 3. 10 by 2 and 5. That's it. Yeah. So 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 5. 240 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. Which are 1, 2, 3, 4. Times 3 times 5. So these are all the factors of 240. This is a factor tree. All right. Then we have a concept of lowest common multiples, LCMs, and the greatest common factors, GCFs. LCMs are known as the lowest common multiples. Lowest common multiples are, you find these when, let's say you're given the two numbers, you write down all the multiples and you pick up the common ones, and then you figure out the lowest common one, okay? And greatest common factors, are when you figure out the factors and then you pick up the commons and the greatest common. So GCF is the greatest common factor. You can also call it the highest common factor GCF. How do you find LCMs? Very simple. For example, if you give the two numbers, so we're, we're studying LCMs now. Uh, maybe six and 10. So in order to take an LCM, you just divide these. From the, start from the lowest possible number. Two threes are six, two fives are 10. Three ones are three, five as it is. Now five ones are five. Two, three, and five. Two threes are six, six fives are 30. So 30 is the lowest common high, lowest common multiple of 6 and 10. How is this answer true? Write down the multiples of 6. 6 ones are 6. 6 twos are 12. 6 threes are 18. 6 twos are 24. 6 fives are 30. 6 six are 36. 6 sevens are 42. And so on. Actually, write down the multiples of 10. 10 ones are 10. 10 twos are 20. 30, 40, 50, so on. Is there a common multiple? Yes. 30 is a common multiple, and there's another 30. Acha, six ke table mein, six tens are 60 bhi aate, or 10 six are 60 bhi aate. So there's another common multiple, 60, 60. But which one is the lowest common? 30. And an answer was also 30. All right. So this is what a lowest common multiple is. This is the concept of LCM. Now, greatest common factors what is the greatest common factor of 6 and 10 again for gcf of 6 and 10 you write down the same division sign start dividing 6 from the lowest number 2 2 3s are 6 2 5s are 10 now because you cannot divide 3 and 5 on a common number you just stop there that is it so answer is 2 2 is the greatest common factor of 6 and 10. How? Let's write down a factor 3 as well, maybe. So 6 ka factor 3 would be 2 and 3. And 10 ka factor 3 would be 5 and 2. So 2 is the greatest common factor existing here. All right, guys, uh, all clear?
Example questions could be termed as maybe write down the smallest the number that is divisible by any two numbers, maybe 34, 35. So this indicates that you're asked to find an LCM. All right. Uh, he's gonna say find the greatest number that could be divisible by any two numbers. Just find out the highest common factor. All right. Hmm. Uh, guys, should we move on because we're done with this concept here? And we'll end this recording um, till LCM and HCF. We'll continue with exponents and roots in, in, another meet, uh, in, a, in another meeting. Yeah. So if there's any question from whatever we've done up till now, please let me know.